Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So, I'm making a start on another project, and these guys are Somalian Militiamen by Eureka Miniatures. So I quite like Eureka Miniatures takes on moderns, they seem fairly well proportioned and good attention to detail for the most part. I also have a, a blister full of US Marines and a couple of boxes of Australians, the um, well, modern Australians. The Marines are exceptionally well detailed, like these guys, uh, while the Australians are, um, well, different sculpt, they don't seem to be as good. But nevertheless, I'll get to them all eventually, it's just, um, this is basically the one of the last of my quarantine projects, and these are the test minis that you'll do to determine what a good colour scheme for them looks like. So, yeah. Um... So to start with, I cleaned up the miniatures. Now, one thing I should note is that there's a lot of flash in the um, gap between the weapon and the arm, so I generally have to file that down. And then I applied a priming layer of my standard Zenithal, which is Chaos Black at all angles, and then uh, Corax White, 45 degrees. Uh, I'm also not aiming for a particularly high level of quality, just um, average tabletop for my um, usual standard. Anyway, without further discussion, let's get on to the painting process. Obviously, we are going to start with the base coats. So to start with, I'm using my old raggedy um, brushes to just give the, um, the larger surface areas, that is the clothing for the most part, a uh, once over. And for this miniature, I'll be painting his shorts US Field Drab and his shirt t-shirt off-white. And for this guy, I wanted to try something a little different and give him a red football jersey. So I'm doing his shorts grey, sky grey, and his um, actual jersey red. Anyway, so let's get on to the base coating. Sorry for the camera, I'm still experimenting with what constitutes a half-decent uh, camera angle for this thing. Of all of the various setups I've tried, I think this one kind of works the best, so you can actually see the detail. Anyway, as you can see, I've sped up the camera quite a bit because the base coating itself is a very tedious and slow process. Um, and as you can see, yeah, like the brush I'm using is ragged, I'm just getting it on the model, uh, fixing it up where I, I go over bits occasionally. And uh, yeah, like these guys in Civilejo model color generally only take about one or two layers to actually cover, apart from the white, which took three or four. Also, sorry about the bouncing from the camera. I haven't quite figured a way to perfectly um, anchor it down yet. And there we go, that's our first um, layer done. Now we're going to do the belt kit on the miniatures. Both of these guys have some pouches and belt, as you can see, um, some more than others. And we'll be, um, across the entire series of these miniatures, I'll, I'm going to do this um, them the same colour to indicate that maybe but they've got it from the same stockpile and also to simplify my painting process. It's already a pain enough as it is to um, give every single model its own set of unique colours. And the colour we'll be using as a base is yellow olive. Again, we're going to put on a base coat um, with the, a yellow olive, but this time I'm, I'm still using my raggedy brushes, but I'm using a smaller one to try and get a bit more of a more precision out of them. I mostly use the raggedy brushes for base coating because um, I kind of want to maximize the life out of my good brushes, so for stuff which where precision isn't necessarily as important, I tend to def fall back to my older brushes. Alright, and we're pretty much done with the belt co uh, coats. Now we're going to work on some of the freehand details. 
Um, so for the football jersey guy, I'm going to roughly sketch on some like team numbers and various uh, trim and effects on the shirt. Um, I was did, initially did some research for real-life football jerseys to see what they look like, but in the end I just decided to improvise because um, replicating the exact patterns on contemporary ones seems a bit too much effort, for especially for um, like individual miniatures on a tabletop. So I just played around with it and did stunt something which I thought works. Um, so as you can see, I just sketched on some numbers, what, one seven, and I'm sketching on some white trim around the place, like around the neck, and I do believe I'll put some around the hem of the shirt. Oh, no, not a hem, um, yeah, just the waist. Um, yeah, so pretty much what I'll do is I, I sketched the initial layer on, then I went back and fixed it up a bit later with, um, some red just to get rid of the bits I don't like and don't think work, and also clean up some of the overspill. For our other guy, I'm not, I thought about being particularly fancy and put drawing it in an elaborate design on his t-shirt, but in the end I just went with different colours on the, um, the neck and the arm cuffs. Um, I don't even know if that's the right word. Just to give it a bit, little bit more like, hey, I'm wearing a polo kind of vibe. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Alright, I've just about wrapped up the first layer of base coats, so let's move on to the washers. So to start with, all of the brownish type substances are getting a layer of German camo black brown. Again, this is my standard Vallejo wash kind of um, method that is um, about one to one part paint and glaze. Oh, one, sorry, one to two parts paint and glaze with a lot of water mixed in. You want this to be very thin, just so it tints the entire thing so it, and it doesn't actually overwrite the old colour. Um, so I'm putting this colour on all of the reds, the greens, and the browns. Because brown is a fairly universal shade, for the most part, with a few exceptions. Anyway, obviously I need to let these dry overnight. Oh, and um, okay, so for the grey and white surfaces, I am using a German grey, or I think it's actually, it's, I think it's black shade. Um, same process, mixed up with glaze medium and water. And I'm trying to actually push it around the model a bit more to try and be sure that it focuses in the cracks. And I'm also putting it on his t-shirt as well. The shades are now down. Um, anyway, I'm gonna have to wait overnight at least for these to dry and then we'll come back and um, start relayering the base colors. So this is the part where I switch over to my good brushes again, my good Winsor & Newtons, and I'm hitting all of the mid-tone areas where I want the original color to be dominant. Um, basically this is all of the intermediate areas, not the shades, not the highlights, just everywhere else. Um, so it's a fairly simple process and pretty quick compared to the process of base coating itself. Just, I'm just going to go over it until it's done. And of course I'm going to reinforce the lettering on the, on the um, jersey whenever, um, where I feel it's appropriate. Um, the white t-shirt was definitely the harder part as um, the white was really hard to get up to a base coat as it is and again when you're relayering it's really hard to cover so this will take like two to three layers at least to start to get that graduated uh, transition from shade to mid-tone again.
Also fixing up a few um, oversplashes on the um, German grey I put down for the trim on the shirt. And finally, I relayer the uh, belt kit with the yellow olive just to um, get the mid-tones um, happening with it again. And there we go, that's the mid-tones re-established, so now we've got our shades and mid-tones down. Alright, I'm going to start combining steps here just for the sake of expedience. Um, so right now I'm doing the flesh, and the colour I'm using is Vallejo Model Colour Shadow Flesh. And I'm just going to layer this, it'll take only one or two coats over the, um, obviously all of the exposed flesh. Here's an example of what happens when you don't take your time. I've accidentally strayed some of the flesh color on his shorts, so I'm going back in with my scrubbing brush and some of the mid-tone again to um, restore that um, original color. And then, yeah, it's pretty quickly done. You can actually fix those sorts of mistakes if you catch them early. So, um, yeah, just bear it, uh, be diligent and watchful as you paint, just to make sure you don't make some critical me uh, mistake like that. And that's it, a very simple and tedious process as I had very little to say during it. Um, yep, once it's done, we're now on to our shade for the flesh. Okay, stand corrected. Um, we're not going onto the shading of the flesh immediately. Um, what I'm doing now is applying highlights. So generally I'm mixing in um, a bit of white from, to most of my base colors just to get the highlight tone going. So as you can see, I'm doing this guy's shirt. So this is just pure white. I'm just hitting the creases and the raised areas and shoulders with a small amount of white. Um, these highlights won't be particularly sharp or crisp. They're more visible on the things like the shorts where it's not actually a white color to begin with. This is, it's more of a gray. Another one of my go-tos is mixing in beige with the color I want to highlight, um, or buff rather. 
buff or beige either works um and just making a slightly lighter t and yellow more yeah what's the word yellowish tone i guess for the highlight color and as you can see it's very very quick to do like only a few seconds compared to the mid-tone and base tone layers um for the shirt i am doing uh carmine red it's barely visible but again i didn't really feel like pushing it too hard especially since these only gaming pieces are not necessarily for display and finally for the um a belt kit i'm doing the same process well not i'm not actually doing the same process this is just reflective 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 gr no it's not even that it's russian uniform from world war ii a particular vallejo color just a simple uh, line highlight on the water bottle and belt and all that other jazz I'm particularly happy with this particular skin tone uh, for the well, wash. It's um, a mix of cadmium red, uh, German camo black brown, and chocolate brown with, of course, my water and Vallejo glaze medium mixed in. And as usual, it'll take at least an overnight to dry, ideally a day for safety. Again, one thing I do is I like, um, I tease the wash around just to make sure it's not pooling anywhere excessively and try and direct it to the actual areas that I want shaded. Um, I generally do this after the initial application with a damp brush rather than a loaded one. Anyway, that's pretty much it. These guys um, took at least a day to dry. We'll come back and um, start relayering, like now. So, um, it's a simple matter of uh, reapplying the shadow flesh to all the intermediate areas, just like with the clothing. Uh, not much to really say about it, other than um, you've seen me paint flesh dozens of times at this point. Um, it's really not that different from any of them. Just focus on the more raised areas, emphasizing the musculature. musculature and um, also the raised areas on the face and fingers. And finally, I'm applying some highlights to the skin just with shadow flesh mixed in with highlight flesh uh, to make it more of a, um, a pinky color, I suppose. Um, and just, you know, hit all of the upper areas, the, um, the nose, the cheekbones and the fingers, that sort of thing. And that's the highlights for the flesh, mostly complete. Alright, so now we're on to the hair. 
For hair, I'm just doing a simple um, process, none of my usual using blues to highlight or anything like that. Just a base layer of um, Vallejo model color black with some slightly lighter uh, grayish color as a highlight. Um, this doesn't look particularly realistic, but I just kind of just wanted to get it done. I, well, not realistic, stylistic, I suppose. Um, and it's also very short cropped hair as well, so um, yeah, there's not a lot of, to work with really. And while we're here, we're going to do the sandals, um, beige brown, basically. Um, and I'm going to make this common across all of the miniatures in this series, just for some uniformity and to ease my painting burden. Alright, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to highlight the hair with a light overbrush of grayish color, a grayish color, I think it may have been German gray. Um, and yeah, that's a, it's a very simple process. So we, our miniatures are really starting to come together now, apart from the um, weapon, obviously. I'm saving, I generally save the metallics to last. Okay, so now I'm applying the wash for the sandals, so that's um, basically German camo black brown. Um, my, basically the same mix from the uh, brownish material on the um, initial base coating step. Okay, now on to the weaponry. So I'm going to start with all of the non-metallic furniture in the on the G3 rifle here. The um, From a lot of the reference photos, these seem to be older, like, um, older weapons that have somehow made it into the, um, well, third world via who knows how. Um, and the furniture for these usually seems to be some sort of greenish color, and this, I believe, is gunship green, which seemed to roughly match with a lot of the reference photos I could find. And for the AK, I used um, golden brown for the um, the lovely wood of the stocks. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how the, these turned out in particular. Uh, but golden brown doesn't cover particularly well, so it took at least two or three coats to get it um, fully um, covered. All right, now on top of the washing. Uh, for this, for the G3, I used just a very dark green color. It might have been dark camo green from Vallejo, um, just to get some slight shading going. And for the um, Kalishnikov, I just used, um, I believe, German camo black brown again. And you'll one thing I do like about these miniatures is it actually they've done a good job of actually sculpting in the grain on the stock, so the wash immediately brings out the detail, and I think it looks really, really good. So again, restoring the mid-tone, um, just like with every other step, and then we'll do some highlighting. And for highlighting, I generally mix in um, a lighter green to the base coat just to get a, um, a decent highlight color for the stock. And again, I'm not making it too um, bright and obvious this time around. Same thing for the wood. I mixed in a bit of beige to the um, golden brown, and I'm um, trying to layer in some um, 
highlights to emphasize the wood grain as well, but I think that only had a limited success. All right, so again, uh, since it's a fairly minor detail, just going to re quickly redo the sandals, restore the main, main mid-tone of beige brown, then mix in some beige to the beige brown to highlight the beige brown. Um, yeah, very simple process. Okay, now because I'm a mad person, time to do the eyes. So again, using one of my finer brushes, I'm getting some um, off-white and just trying to let let it run, well not so much run, carefully place it into the eye socket, um, ideally creating a horizontal white line. And in one of these guys, I don't remember which one, I let the white run a bit to actually get into the shade areas. This is fine. Um, I fixed it later on by putting in some German camo black brown to cover up the mistake. And once the uh, white is dry, just use a very thin brush to put just, just to put a little tiny line of German gray running um, vertically um, across the line to give the impression of the eye that this is basically my simple eyes method for line infantry um, if I'm doing um, a more complicated model I will really bust out the OptiVisor and work at it um, I try to get you know reflective lights colored pupils that sort of thing uh, I was sorry reflected light in the eye that sort of thing but since these guys are only dick gaming miniatures I don't care that much Anyway, um, so onto the base. I'm just using, um, I believe this is dark sand, and I'm just covering the entire base with it. All right, now that the base is dry, I'm going to dry brush some highlight colors in. The first one is buff, but that didn't come out too well. So I then went to white to try and get some actual highlights happening on the um, sandy, gravelly ground, um, which worked fairly well. Now, finally, I'm going to shade the entire thing, give it more of a brown texture. And for this, I'm using Games Workshop's Seraphim Sepia. Sepia. Okay, now on to metallics, uh, saving the um, metallics to last to avoid contaminating the paint pot with metallic flakes. So the color I use for the um, base coating, the actual metals, is a, um, 
I think it's, yeah, just Vale regular Vallejo gunmetal grey mixed with black. Now, since modern weapons are basically um, blued steel, which means they are generally not particularly metallic looking, only slightly, very slightly reflective, um, this is fine. We want a metallic, but a very, very dull, dull to down metallic. So I find this combination tends to work with most, you know, World War um, II and modern, like, weaponry, unless the weapon itself is largely some polymer thing. Um, yeah, so again, painting all of the metallic components on the AK, and since I know a little bit about guns, this include you obviously start picking out things like the buttstock, um, the butt plate rather, as the um, as well, if you want to keep it somewhat realistic. Um, but yeah, it's as usual. Just I'm going to keep layering this until I'm happy with the result, um, and then we'll um, come back to it once we're on to our final highlights. Okay, our final highlight is some pure gunmetal, and I'm just going to lightly tap this on some of the raised areas, just to emphasize um, glinting metal. Um, no big deal, you want this effect to be subtle, otherwise it just makes the weapon look a bit ridiculous and unrealistic. And it's actually quite an easy process, and now we have finished our miniature, or set of miniatures rather. And here is the finished result. I am very happy with how these turned out. Um, and I've got, looking across at my workbench, another 10 to go. Um, so yeah, if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Though, no rush or no hurry if you don't want to. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.